Hello, welcome to the first part of Unity Third Person Shooter tutorial. Uh, first, I'm gonna tell you the assets I'm gonna be using. This is the first one, the characters. I'm gonna use this free assets. Uh, you can download it from Unity Asset Store. Here's the link. I'm also gonna put the link on the description below this video. This is the character I'm gonna be using. Uh, this is the gun, the weapons I'm gonna be using. It's also a free asset. You can find it on the asset store, on Unity Asset Store. Here's the link. And uh, for the particles, I'm also gonna use this asset. Uh, it's a Unity Technologies asset. And here's the link, it's also free. Uh, for animations, I'm gonna be using uh, animations from Mixamo. Uh, it's a website that provides users with free animations and some uh, 3D models. It's a really awesome tool. I'm gonna export uh, a lot of animations from here and all of them are free uh, and uh, ready to use. So. I'm gonna import. I've already actually imported these three packages, and I'm already uh, exported the animations from here into Unity uh, and categorized them like this. I'm gonna put a link on the description below uh, to the animation clips, so you don't have to go through all. Uh, the painful process exporting all the animations and categorizing them uh, so I'm gonna do it for you and uh, give you the link so you could download it easily without any trouble uh, so the first thing we do uh, let's first I always like to put my assets in a folder called packages the assets I download from asset store I always put them in the folder uh, for to have a cleaner uh, scene okay now uh, we have this scene I'm gonna create a plane as our uh, terrain for now Uh, I'm gonna drag and drop a character This package contains four different characters. Of course, you can make a lot of characters using these assets uh, I'm just gonna take the first one doesn't really matter I'm gonna name it player so uh, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create another folder called scripts. This is our scripts gonna go and another folder called player. Okay, I'm gonna create a script called player input I'm going to open it up so I'm going to define the variable
So uh, after creating the variables, we need to give them value in our update function. As you probably know, Unity have a input system for this. So I'm, I've created this script so we could uh, get the input for different platforms. Right now, I'm going to just go for PC private void PC input Okay, uh, I'm going to be calling this an update function. So uh, let's create another one. I think we don't have crouch and walk and input. So let's create it. I'm going to go to input, access, we got jump, so that's good, I'm going to just duplicate jump, name it crouch, and key for that would be C, duplicate it, going to be walk, I'm going to for now, I'm just going to go with V. And for Sprint. I'm going to go with Left Shift. Okay. So we got our input. Uh, I don't like this guys to be visible in inspector, so I'm just gonna using system. I'm gonna do non-serialized. Of course, you could do hide in hide in inspector too, but I like to do it this way. So here they go. Now we have a input script easily gets the input for us. You can just create a condition here if the platform is uh, Windows, Linux or uh, Mac you can get these inputs if it's a mobile device get joystick whatever. It's easier this way, better this way. So I'm going to let it compile. And I'm just going to add it to our player. That's going to get our input. I'm going to create another script called player 
camera. So I'm going to define the variables for the camera. The first two variables are two booleans. Uh, one of them is for the mouse to lock the mouse. The other one is for debug mode for, for the times you don't want the mouse to affect the camera. Maybe you want to uh, coordinate something with another thing and you, you want to move into the scene while in the play mode or whatever for for any reason you 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 want to debug the camera so you're going to use these variables So, uh, this is for locking mouse, as I said, and debugging. This is the height of the camera from the ground. This is the distance of the camera uh, from character. Uh, and this is the distance from uh, character when you are aiming. This is offset from the head. Uh, sometimes you want to look behind the cover, for example. You are behind the wall. You want to look at the left or right you can tweak this offset uh, and move the camera right and left of the your of your character uh, to see other side of the wall or even changing the view uh, to navigate your character easily this is a follow speed uh, how fast the camera following your character and this is the rotate speed of your camera around the character this is the minimum angle and maximum angle of the camera uh, that vertically is allowed to go and this is the mask of uh, this is the collision mask uh, so your camera uh, moves when it goes behind uh, something that blocks it and has this layer uh, it collides with it and it comes closer to you to to a point that there is nothing between you and the camera uh, let's create a variable for now as public bull aiming temporary aiming actually temp Aiming. We're, we're gonna delete this variable but for now let's just say this determines if the character is aiming or not because I want to create a public float distance which is gets this distance where is it here based on the aiming so if it's aiming if it's temp aiming and else if it's aiming we're gonna return aim distance otherwise we're gonna return distance so we're not gonna call this two we're just gonna call this one and depending on whether you're aiming or not it's just gonna return a value I'm gonna collapse that so uh, 
let's also get a reference to our input so private We don't need a start, I'm just gonna use a wake. And here is gonna be a private. I'm gonna use this function to populate this three variables I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna create three empty game objects here and let's first get our player input this script is gonna be attached to the player so uh, it's gonna have the player input also attached so we can just get it like this without any trouble after we got this then we're gonna initialize So uh, this is the way we're going to initialize our camera. Uh, these are the transforms we're going to be using. Uh, the active is for here where we're saying if it's not active, sometimes we might not initialize our camera right in the start or awake. So we we gotta wait for it to get initialized then we're gonna uh, do the update function this way uh, we can avoid uh, getting null errors in the update so now we're gonna create the camera follow and rotating around the character So here we go. The function is over, is done. Let's test it to see what's the result. 
I'm gonna attach the player camera these are the default variables and let's test it as you see it's working very good so there is a little problem when we collide with collide behind the walls let's show you what i mean let's create a wall here now i'm gonna play it again so when i go through the wall it's just doesn't show my player anymore but i wanted to uh, clamp to this point where it can show my character for that we need to do a camera collision function So uh, I'm going to copy this and paste it right here. So it first checks the colli collision. It's going to do the rest later. Uh, so it's going to... Uh, actually, let's using system. Uh, some of these guys I don't want to be visible in inspector I could make them private but I'm gonna be needing them to be called and referenced from other functions other scripts later so it would be better to just hide them instead of making them private uh, good enough Let me explain what's happening right now. So, let me first, let's first see the result. So now, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to assign the layer mask. Here's the layer mask, we're gonna do default. Uh, of course, to avoid player interfering of course the player layer is default as well so i'm just gonna create another layer name it player and make the player all and all his children have the same layer so let's play again now you see it doesn't go behind the wall it just sticks with the player easily so this is the game of this is the main camera here this is the two uh, empty game object we created in the scripts I'm gonna pause the game and show you what it is exactly this is the root as we know it uh, in the script we know this game object as root what it does it follows the player everywhere the player goes that's the only job he has so the player moves here this follows it that's it that's the only job it has now the pivot the pivot is let me 
update the location so the pivot is uh, gonna be the the location the camera is pointing towards so it has the height almost as uh, a height of the player and it has a little bit of offset you know to go right and left for example if this is let's say this is the game view right now here and if you give it an offset it just comes over here if, it, if you give it a negative value it comes over here it's just do this for example you're behind a wall you want to look from here you give it a little bit offset and you look like this and you give it a positive offset it looks like this so the offset is good for that this is it this is the offset this is the height and it's also apparent of the root so it also follows the player anywhere it goes now the camera the main camera is the child of the pivot so here it is so in order to rotate the camera around the player we're not doing anything with this fella here we're rotating the pivot so when we rotate the pivot the camera is actually rotating around the player that's what we're doing we're rotating the pivot and we only use the vertical only vertical for horizontal purpose we're rotating the root see this is how it's working this is the basically everything about it and about the camera collision uh, in every frame we're gonna and also the pivot is looking the same direction as our camera as you see here so we're gonna raycast a ray from pivot towards the back ward of our pivot so this is the blue uh, arrow is front we're gonna raycast this direction and if it hits anything we're gonna bring the camera to that location easily that's how our camera collision also works so see it brings it to the location it's getting hit so this is how everything works uh, this is every the code that we wrote is actually doing uh, I hope uh, you found this tutorial useful I'm definitely going to update this and continue this tutorial series. Uh, if you liked it, please hit the thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel to be notified if the new videos got released. Thank you for watching.